Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. I wanted to give a little introduction because this episode is a recap of the Barrett Sports Media Summit from this year in New York City. And there were a whole lot of lessons that, that I pulled from the summit this year. It was a great chance to network with people, to meet new people, professionals in the business. And I think there are some things that you can gather from the summit this year that'll help make you a better sportscaster and a better sports fan including there is one theme that I felt resonating throughout all of the panels, all of the discussions, all of the networking sessions. There was one theme that I thought people, whether they knew it or not, they were really engaged in this one theme. And it's something that you can incorporate into your career and help you make you a better broadcaster and a better sports fan. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Leave your comments and feel free to contact me. Let me know what you think. All right, I have to tell you about a great event last week, and I learned a ton. I met so many awesome people, and it was really more than I expected. It was a fantastic event, and of course I'm talking about the Barrett Sports Media Summit in New York City last week. There was one theme particularly that I could sense from almost every one of the panelists, Almost every one of them, they were talking about different things, different topics, different parts of the sports media industry, but they all, it seems, without exception, touched on this one key ingredient that you need to build a successful sports media career. And in just a minute, I'm going to tell you what it is. Welcome to the Sportscasters Club Radio Show, where it's all about becoming a better sportscaster and a better sports fan. And now, your host, a man who has trained sportscasters at Marist College, the Connecticut School of Broadcasting, and Fordham University's WFUV Radio, Rick Schultz. All right, welcome to the Sportscasters Club online radio show. I am Rick Schultz. Great to have you with us for another scintillating, fantastic, riveting episode. And this is really a fun one. I mean, I hope they all are. But in this particular episode, we are going to talk about the event that I attended last week, the Barrett Sports Media Summit in New York City. If you don't know Barrett Sports Media, Google them. Check them out. We've talked to Jason Barrett on this radio show in the past. And it is really the premier sports media company in all the country. Um, they do consulting for different stations around the country. But what they do is they put on a yearly summit. It's a place you can go to search for jobs if that's the stage in your career. You can hire them to work with you, whether you're a program director, a station, a media outlet. But the content they put out is just first rate. And so really, Barrett Sports Media over the past many years has built a reputation across the country as being the place to go if you're in the sports media. And this was the first, surprisingly enough, this was the first Barrett Sports Media Summit I've ever attended. This was the third one. The first one was in Los Angeles last year, or the second one was in New York, and this year, just last week was in New York City as well. The Ann Bernstein Theater, 5th, West 50th Street. Not a bad drive-in, I have to say. Drove in, I actually only went Thursday. It was Wednesday, Thursday. Drove in about 10 p.m. Wednesday night. Stayed over at the Hotel Edison. Small room, but very comfortable. Really liked the hotel, actually. And then it was just a three-block walk around the corner, right there in the heart of Times Square, right around the corner up to the Ann Bernstein Theater. And you could take the elevator up to the third floor, and there was a, a theater. And initially, everybody was really warmly greeted, which was such a nice tone to set. You could really sense that a lot of the attendees knew each other from previous summits and also from working with Barrett Sports Media and with each other. So a lot of people knew each other, which is great. And then you certainly have other people in, from the industry 
that show up and they're there to meet people and network and connect. And it's fantastic for that. But the two days were a number of panels ranging from every topic that you could imagine in the industry. And on Thursday, particularly the day that I was there, I saw program directors talking about their thought process, how they find talent, how they keep talent, what they're thinking about when it comes to disseminating their material on alternate methods now, because it's not just radio. Now you've got podcasts and digital that are taking over. And so how do you navigate that in disseminating your material in other places, but also staying true to what you really are if you're a radio station and a radio program? So we saw topics and and panels that discussed that. We saw panels that discussed the digital age. We saw panels talking about social media, which was really intriguing. You know, you can go you can go five days and then there's a whole new bunch of things to learn about social media as far as platforms you've never heard of. I mean, just think back two, three, four years. How many of the platforms that people rely on today were either just emerging a few years ago or were not even out, were not even in the, the public lexicon? I mean, think about it and how things shift. It's no longer Facebook, but it's now Instagram. It's no longer you know, some of the ones we used to use, and now it's all of a sudden it's TikTok. And the way it changes and evolves and how each one has its own way of communication, its own way of connecting with people, it's really intriguing. So some, some really great conversations about that. There were some big-time broadcasters there. Obviously, the big news was that Barrett Sports Media was able to get Mike and the Mad Dog back together, and they were on stage for an hour talking about their program, their history, what's happened over the past three decades, how things have gone for them since they broke up, and they just touched on so many topics, just really a great conversation from Mike and the Mad Dog. Craig Carton was there from WFAN, and he was very candid about his career and where he is now and how he's battled back through some tough times and how now he's working with Evan Roberts on FAN and how that chemistry is going. We saw program directors talking about maintaining that relationship with their talent, about what they're looking for, about what they think makes an excellent talent. So this conference was really just fantastic. One of the one of the best panels was a few agents on the stage, talent agents, as well as a media manager. And they talked about dealing with each other. They talked about what it was like going in for a contract negotiation on behalf of a client, let's say a sports talk host, and what were some of the things they were thinking about when they were sitting down with some of these media managers and and stations. And so hearing it from both sides just was really compelling to listen to, in my opinion. I, you know, just to have agents up there talking about what they're thinking through and what they're trying to do on behalf of their clients. They also talked about when someone would need an agent and when they wouldn't. So this was just some really cool stuff. Check out Barrett Sports Media. Check out the website because I'm sure you can find some of the content there. They streamed the event. And certainly if you have a chance to attend next year, I would definitely recommend it. But among all this, among all this really fun, compelling, I mean, I got to chat with old friends, got to see my buddy Freddie Coleman. That was great. Justin Craig, I've known for probably 15 years. Great, great star in the executive ranks with ESPN. Uh, Many other people there that either I've known or known of, Uh, but there were some really top talent there from New York City and across the country. So it was a lot of fun. But the point that I want to bring up today on this episode is that regardless of who the people were speaking, whether they were 70 years old or 25 years old, whether they were from in front of the camera or behind, whether they were an executive from the boardroom or they were an agent, whatever part of the industry they were from, they all touched on one specific key that helped them be successful. And it was quite fascinating because, you know, just sitting and listening and watching, you know, you you know that they all come from a different perspective. An agent's thought process is different than a talk show host's perspective. 
and a president of a worldwide media company has a different agenda and a different outlook than a local market manager in a top 25 market or a top 100 market or someone just breaking into the industry. They all come from different angles. But across all of these wide-ranging swaths of, of the media that we saw on stage, there was one common theme that stood out, and some of them talked about it plainly and openly, and the others referred to it in more subtle ways, less overt ways. And in just a minute... I'm going to tell you what this one key, this one foundation to building your career is, and we're going to talk about it next. Is this the year you want to learn all you can about a sports broadcasting career? Visit our website, sportscastersclub.com, for articles, tips, advice, and a ton of free resources. All right, so I'm talking about the Barrett Sports Media Summit in New York City last week. Just a lot of fun. Just a great time. Heard from so many professionals. There were a lot of surprises thrown in, which is really the way they do things because they put together a first-rate event, and then they add to it. So it's even better when you show up than, than you expected, which is really cool. Learned a lot. But let's talk about this one theme that seemed to wiggle and worm its way through the entire conference. The entire two days. And again, I was only there for one day. But you can find a lot of the material at their website. The one theme that I heard over and over and over was that this is a relationship business. It's all about relationships. And think about that. You've heard us talk about that here at Sportscasters Club. Whether it's on this radio show, on our website on our seven-hour online course, we pound home the thought process that relationships help you build a successful, lasting, thriving, long-lasting career. And that is so true. We've always talked about that, how to cultivate mentors, how to network effectively, how to build lasting relationships. But when you heard that come from just about every speaker at the Barrett Sports Media Summit, To me, it really hit home because it wasn't a topic. So it wasn't, for example, it wasn't from 9 a.m. till 10 a.m., the panel talking about building relationships. That panel was maybe talking about building a brand or about how to thrive in the digital age or how sports gambling has evolved and what what does the next decade of sports media and sports gambling look like. Maybe those were the topics of the panels, but during those panels, from such a wide range of people, it always came down to relationships. I mean, there were there were talk show hosts discussing coming back from difficult things and adversity, and how the deep, intimate conversations and, and discussions with his program director helped him know when was the right time and what was the right move for him to make. And it all came down to that relationship. One of the most pretty, one of the most amazing conversations during one of the panels, there was an agent on stage talking with a media manager on stage. And they were talking about how to deal during contentious contract negotiations, how to deal with the other side. And they brought up specific times they had been at opposite ends of the table negotiating with each other. And here they were at the Barrett Summit talking about it on stage. They didn't talk specifics, but they talked about what helped them deal effectively with each other and get a win-win. And again, for them, it came down to trust in each other, to honesty, to being open with each other and having that solid relationship. And that's how they were able to bridge the gap and find a win-win in these contract negotiations. So you heard it from them. You heard it from millennials that were on stage talking about the digital age and how things are are changing and social media and how to build your brand and how to create a following and deliver for that following. And it was amazing to hear it from them because 
there's no secret why they're successful. I mean, one of the big secrets, yes, it's talent, it's work ethic, it's all those things. But whether they know it or not, and they did because they talked about it, they were so good at building relationships. And if you look across the media spectrum, take a look. If you see someone successful, even if you don't know that person off the air, you can bet that they are good, they are competent, and above average at building relationships. Because if I heard it once, I heard it 10 times throughout that day that it's a relationship business. I heard a top program director say it's a relationship business. And then he talked about the importance of cultivating the next generation of leaders in his organization and across the industry. And he said, by getting to know them, by getting to know their work ethic, you can determine if they have a possibility of rising to that rank and rising up to a higher level. And by knowing them and helping to nurture that relationship, you can help them do it. And I mean, it was pretty overt in that case that it's a relationship business in in preserving the continuity of our organizations and from the other side too. If that's your goal and that's what you're looking to do, you've got to go out there, you've got to hustle, you've got to work hard, be willing to do whatever you want to do, whatever you have to do, and do it on the basis of relationships. They, there were some, some talk show hosts that were in attendance that had gotten their jobs via coming to these Barrett sports media summits in the past. And so there's really no better example of what uh, getting to know someone, forming a relationship, staying in contact, those things are the bedrock of success. And I just thought it was something that I had to get on here and talk about because it wasn't a topic. It wasn't something that they set out to do, but it weaved its way throughout every single panel that I saw. And it also stands out the reason why the summit has grown every year and the why the, the reason more and more professionals are gravitating to Barrett Sports Media. And I'm not just saying that because I'm connected with them and I write for them on the news side. That's true, but this was a sports event. But there's so many corollary topics and so many similarities between the two. And even though it's, it's not something they talk about as a goal, the reason they've been successful is because they build these relationships and it goes both ways. And that's why they've grown every year and that's why they've become a great resource in the industry. So I just thought that was something that really ties into what we talk about here at Sportscasters Club and something definitely I wanted to discuss today. So if you have a chance, check out BarrettSportsMedia.com and you can probably see some of the highlights on the website. I know they always post some of the clips. It was a lot of fun and I know a lot of the media in New York City picked up some of the uh, goings-on that were happening there with some of the big people who were in attendance, like, as I said, Mike and the Mad Dog, Craig Carton, Mark Chernoff, uh, and the list goes on, John Skipper, and some of the other uh, fantastic professionals that were in attendance. So hope you uh, enjoyed listening to this. And when I come back, one last thing to wrap this puppy up. When you're done with this episode, or even if you want to open your browser now, you can go deeper and learn the secrets of sports broadcasting. Search our full list of books at sportscastersclub.com. Available from Amazon and Kindle, paperback, and audible format. All right, one last thing before I let you go. You know, we've talked about this, and as I mentioned, we discuss a lot of this in our online course, our seven-hour course. You can check that out at sportscastersclub.com. We talk a lot about the importance of finding a mentor and building these kind of lasting relationships in your career. But I would challenge you, if you're listening and if you are looking to build a career this year, looking to to expand yourself in the sports media industry or just media in general, I will challenge you to go out and find someone this month. Find one person, one additional person that you can consider either a friend, a colleague, and make a connection with that person, a meaningful one. Take them to coffee, shoot them an email, shoot them a text, connect on Twitter, whatever it is. Connect with someone that you're interested in 
either knowing more about or making a connection or sharing something with that's valuable to them, but make a meaningful connection. Not that you're going out to, to take, take, take or use them or get something from them, but find someone that you have something in common with that maybe is in a stage of their career that you want to be at someday. Make a connection and commit to doing that one thing this month and you'll be amazed at what happens. And then next month, commit to doing it again. Find one more person that you can connect with. And at the end of one year, you will have 10, 12 new people. I can do math. 12 new people that you can look back on as part of your network. And you will be amazed what that does for your career in the next year, five years, 10 years. So if you do that, you're going to be so far ahead of the game. So I'm Rick Schultz. Hope you enjoyed this. This was a, a lot of fun for me. I really appreciated being at the Barrett Sports Media Summit. Uh, just a classy organization that does so much in the sports media industry. Hope you enjoyed hearing about it. And next time we're going to talk about another topic that was discussed at the summit. We're going to talk about that as well. I'm Rick Schultz. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for listening to the Sportscasters Club radio show at sportscastersclub.com. Don't forget to subscribe so you will never miss an episode. And thanks for liking, sharing, posting reviews, and spreading the word.